post-match chat with chaps for that Millwall podcast where it finished at the den. Millwall won, Watford nil. Job done. That's how I would describe that game. <laughs> it, it certainly wasn't um, the best watch. Um, it probably wasn't the best performance from us, if I'm being honest. But all that matters is that we got three points. And I will take performances like that. I will take flute goals. I'll take own goals. I really don't care. As long as we continue to win games and we keep this club in the league, that is literally all I care about. Um, other than the fact it was... Super Neil Harris's second come in. Two wins from his opening two games, by the way. Um, it won't be a game that will be <laughs> remembered for the ages, that's for sure. But it was effective and uh, we were effective with that performance. A very resolute defensive display against a side that clearly got a lot of talent and a lot of quality, um, but couldn't break us down. Uh, a combination of, as I say, resolute defending and I think a lack, lack of confidence on their behalf. Um, so let's get into it as we always do then. So I'll start off with the, the lineups. So for us, uh, just the one change. So he brings in Duncan Watmore uh, for Ryan Longman. Um, my imp opinion of that change was essentially because I felt he wanted to give us someone that would maybe stretch them more um, and a bit more of an attacking outlet, whereas I think Longman is much better you know, more in the defensive mould, which, which we saw against Southampton, um, which was good to see. I was surprised that we probably didn't see Norton Cuffey come back into the side, but uh, the manager got it spot on, as we will absolutely come to talk about. Um, but uh, that was that was it for us. The obviously other noticeable difference was Tom Bradshaw uh, was not on the bench. We now, after hearing from Harris post-match, know that he had an Achilles injury and it looks like he's going to be out for some time and possibly the whole season, which gives us just Michael Obafemi and a return in Imaku as striker options, as well as, of course, Zian Fleming that can play up top, I'm sure. But we really are thin on the ground there. And it's uh, it'd be interesting to see what he does Tuesday because I'm not sure that Obafemi can play three games in a week. So it'd be very interesting to see what he does. But anyway, let's focus on this. And then in terms of Watford... Um, It'd be really interesting to hear Watford fans, but I felt on paper that was probably the strongest team that you could have fielded and have fielded for some time. You know, you had um, Seri Celta, Chilean uh, centre-back, come back in for Pollock, who obviously had the nightmare showing against us last season. You welcome back Jeremy and Gakia, and obviously Bayo coming back into the fold in, the, in recent weeks as well. Was, was certainly, you know, I feel like you're, you're almost full strength, to be honest, uh, now. And it enables you to play two up top, uh, which you did. And, um, you know, my key takeout for, for, for you is that you, you just, you do look like you're lacking in confidence. And I think that there's a lot of quality in your team, um, but you, you, you just couldn't break us down, unfortunately. Once we got that early goal, we did uh, what a Neil Harris, side's, the Harris side does best at the den, and that is shut up shop. But let's get into um, the game then. So first half, um, we kick off the opening couple of minutes. Exactly what you expect. The crowd is electric. It, Harris, obviously, before kickoff comes out and claps the fans. And from, from minute one, uh, it was all all go. I felt we um, we won a free kick after 30 seconds and Kiembe got booked. I think it's got to be one of the earliest bookings of the season. Um, from that, I think we had... Um, so we had a free kick that, you know, nothing really happened with that free kick. I think Savile took. And then we win another free kick, which Zian Fleming wins a free kick. Um, he kind of shields the ball from Jake Livermore, waits for the contact. Livermore goes into the back of him. It is a foul uh, in, in modern football. Um, and then Fleming lines up the shot from 30, 35 yards out. It's a long way. And, he, 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 you know... He takes the shot. It's on target from the angle, initial angle. You, you don't quite realise it takes a deflection. It's not a huge deflection, to be perfectly honest. It doesn't really change the trajectory of the ball that much. And Ben Hamer, don't know what he's doing in goal. The, the, if that was Sarkic, we'd all be absolutely furious with that. And it's in the it's in the back of the net. We're 1-0 up, three minutes gone. Very similar to Southampton, taking an early lead. The den erupts. Zian Fleming gives it his signature... Um, 
double uh, bicep celebration. And it's it's the best start we could have hoped for. Um, gifted a goal. But at the end of the day, if you don't win the free kick and then you don't take the free kick and get it on target, these things don't happen. So sometimes you make your own luck. Um, and then in reality, other than one other chance that I recall from Duncan Watmore, which we'll, we will talk about, from that minute onwards, it was basically one-way traffic. Um, <laughs> Watford ended up with 65% possession, so not quite the 80 that Southampton had. But the, the, the thing is, is that that was their highest uh, possession for some considerable uh, amount of time, by the way. And it, the game was basically defence versus attack. For, for the rest of it, in reality. Um, I'll go through some of the chances that they had. So, uh, Bio hit the side netting after we switched off from a, a short frame that they took. Uh, Espria had a shot from the edge of the area that was fairly comfortable for Sarkic. Um, after we, I think, Savile won the ball back and then gave it away, or Honeyman did, I can't remember. Um, we did that quite a lot in the first half. We would win the ball back and then give it away. And I think that was just down to well, probably the amount of pressure they were putting us under and nerves. And then uh, Wesley Hoyt had a free kick that sailed over the bar. That was all I know from their side uh, in the first half. We had the uh, other, in my opinion, the other most clear-cut chance of the game, which was where, again, just a long pump forward from Sarkic. Hoyt and um, the right-back, was it in Gakir? I can't, I can't recall. Just don't really deal with it. Then Hamer comes running out. Again, they don't deal with it. Um, the ball ends up then sort of uh, going towards goal, but not on target. But I don't know if it's the wind or or whatever, but the ball seems to just run away from Watmore. Initially, I thought Watmore was slow to react, but I don't think he was. Um, and then Watmore does reach the ball first and he strikes it against the foot of the post. I think uh, Hoyt, or is it Saracelta at that point, would have, would have covered it in fairness. I don't think... Um, it was going to go in. But that was definitely the most clear-cut chance in the first half, other than, of course, our goal. Uh, second half, um, I felt that on about 50-55, the atmosphere did start to get a little bit nervy. I felt the atmosphere overall was good. I've seen a lot of videos, and maybe it depends where you sit, um, saying it was outstanding. I, I personally don't think it was, but that was just maybe where I was sitting. Um, it. it it went up and down, but you could tell there was a lot of nerves in the crowd, and that's bound to happen. At the end of the day, with you know backs against the wall, defending one nil lead, knowing that every other team around us is winning again, um, it's gonna uh, obviously the odd the odd monk chant to to keep the boys going. And I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the leadership I saw on the pitch and how the, the crowd definitely fed off moments like that. And that's what a Millwall crowd does when we see these things, these tackles flying in. Uh, this is what gets us off our seat. So. And I feel like Harris, one of the things he's done, he has been able to teach the players in a very short space of time, especially those players that don't haven't seen that side of the den before, how to get that reaction from us. But um, I, I sidetracked there. I felt after sort of 50, 55 minutes, we started to get nervous. You could see we were getting tired. Uh, we do make the change for, for of Duncan Watmore um, uh, initially and and just to try and keep some fresh legs on the pitch we do end up making quite a few substitutions to keep things ticking over obviously the most noticeable two were Ryan Longman and Brooke Norton Cuffey um Obafemi and, and what more definitely starting to tire for sure um the biggest chances that they had in the second half uh there was one where Jamal Lewis does well to get down the left hand side I mean Jamal Lewis I'm sure he went to Newcastle for 10 million pound or good good fallback in fairness gets to the byline cuts it back uh to to bio but uh Tanganga goes with him all the way and bio shot isn't on target uh Kone uh who came on I believe in the second half had a shot over the bar living more of a long distance effort that was straight at Sarkic um and then there was some good defending defensive uh, work from Leonard on Martins toward the end towards the end that that uh, pr prevented a, a real sort of goal-scoring opportunity. But in terms of chances and clear-cut chances, I listened to Valerian Ismail's uh, post-match and, and he basically, a lot of what he said I agreed with. It was defence versus attack for a lot of the game, but what didn't really create anything clear-cut. And by us getting the early goal, 
we were then able to sit, defend, soak up the pressure. And again, the mentality shift from this team is just outstanding because we are able now, a few months ago, we would not have held on. We would not have held on against the side that had had the you know, territorial dominance that they had. We wouldn't have held on. And that, again, just shows you how, in a very short space of time, the mentality shift of this group is phenomenal. And whilst, yeah, I don't think the performance was amazing yesterday, um, we got the job done. And that's literally all that matters. I, I couldn't care less if that's how we play for, for between now and end of the season. We just need to pick up wins. And obviously, with every other team winning around us, it's going to be a high tide this season, for sure. Um, it's not going to be, you know, I think we, we probably talked about sort of 45 points being enough, but I'm not so sure it is, to be honest now. I think it's going to be closer to 50, given all the results yesterday. QPR winning at Leicester. I mean, who saw that coming? I suppose people will say the same about us at Southampton, although Leicester's form has started to dip. Uh, Huddersfield getting a draw with Leeds. Stoke beating Borough. Um Southampton did us a favour by bringing Birmingham back into the fold with a late winner there. But we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. But yeah, I think overall, we just got the job done. Um, I think there is nothing more I like than seeing at the end there where we break, but Honeyman takes the ball into the corner. And then the eruptions of when we won that first corner and then we won it again with Fleming you know, and he's fist pumping the crowd. That's what's that's that there is what unites the club, and that is what sees these players over the line with little things like that. It was superb game management at the end there, which we have failed to do so many times this season. And one of the talking points I want to go on to now is just the leadership across the pitch, which I've not said for a long time. I've got some notes here, but twice in the first half, I see Savile absolutely berating other players. I think one time he berated Leonard, another time he berated Watmore. Love it. Absolutely love it. He's on the pitch. He's our skipper. He threw his body on the line on 10 minutes to uh, block a shot, which I think caught him in the knackers. You know, you've got Fleming celebrating and fist pumping the fans, winning a corner. Uh, Cooper had, I think, 15 first contacts, winning, you know, almost every header until Ryevich come on anyway. You had Leonard shepherding the ball out of play when he was already beaten by their winger. Then you've got the foul that he gave away and the booking for their free kick right at the death. He got it wrong, but he just went steaming into a player. We love to see that. Honeyman, we're going to talk a lot about Honeyman because he was my man of the match. He chased everything, absolutely everything. You've then got Harris. If you watch him on the sidelines, he constantly applauding the players, keeping them motivated, shouting them. He's in their ear constantly. And that is the game management and leadership you need across this group to get us over the finishing line against teams like we're playing. Um, I'm now going to flick up something on screen um, uh, now. So, um, and what this basically is, it's very similar to what I talked about in the last post-match. And this is defensive action. So this is uh, tackles, this is interceptions, it's blocks, it's clearances, it's anything that's classed as a, a defensive action. So for Southampton... And for Ips, uh, sorry, start again. Southampton and uh, yesterday against Watford, 107 defensive actions in both games, which is 55% up on the two games previously, which was Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich at home. So we know that bit. Now you can see who made them up. So you can see there that George Honeyman, despite technically playing as a winger, had 21% of all defensive actions. He was outstanding. The amount of tackles that he won yesterday from tracking back, he was phenomenal. Um, again, you can see on there, Danny Mack, 10% of all defensive actions. Again, considering he's playing out of position, I thought he was faultless yesterday. Um, Saville, 13%. Mitchell, 12%. Cooper and Tangang, 8% each. But it's just to show you the effort levels that are being given by these players. They are just taking it to another level. I wish... Uh, this is all up to stats, by the way. Um for those of you, are sort of everything I'm going to share is is, is based on Opta stats. The one stat I can't get, which I'm desperate to see because I just I think it'd be a really interesting comparison, is the running stats. So I can't get that, unfortunately, because 
what this this is only kind of when you touch the ball, when you tackle, you clear, you block. What it doesn't do is look at the amount of sort of closing down players do, or the amount of just off the ball work, which I'm sure the likes of Billy Mitchell uh, and Honeyman would really, and, and the likes of Watmore. I, I heard Watmore. I sort of heard a couple of different things yesterday, different opinions. I thought some people said he worked his ass off. Some people said he was lazy. For me, I don't think he was lazy. I think he was just blown out of his ass after about 60 minutes because, again, I, th I don't think he's a 90-minute player, but I thought he gave it his all, in fairness, and I felt he was vital of our pressing game, which I now flick on to my next um, um, sort of bit of analysis on screen. And what this is, is this is um, long balls attempts attempted against us. So what you can see there is there's been a significant increase in the amount of long balls attempted against us since Harris has come in. Now, of course, Watford and Southampton had loads more passes anyway, so they're a lot more possession. But what this does show me is that, have a think about it. Why do you, why when we play teams like Southampton and Watford, would they go for a long ball? And to me, that is because we're pressing them more. And I think that, that, again, and that's why I wanted to highlight maybe the work that Watmore does. And I think Obafemi's getting there. And Harris alluded to it. He, he said in the post-match, like, he wants to uh, Obafemi to kind of play the Millwall way. And what he's saying is he's running and hassling. And I felt he had his best game in the Millwall shirt yesterday, running the channels and various different things. But to me, the fact that teams are, are playing longer balls, longer balls against us is all down because we're forcing them to. Um, they can't find the nice little short pass. You know, they're, they're having to play slightly longer balls, which again goes down to effort levels. So this is kind of the, one of the closest stats I can get to trying to look at how much work rate we're putting in. Because that's kind of what I'm trying to, with both of these sort of tables, that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to ultimately show that the effort levels of these players is just absolutely through the roof. And if I'm honest, I don't think we actually have an 11 that is capable in terms of quality to compete with the likes of Watford. And then, and, it, and I'm sure that will probably draw, uh, it will trigger a few people in here. But I do think when you've got teams like Watford that are mid-table sides in the championship, that just shows you the where this league is now. And for us to compete in this league, especially with the resources we have at the moment, I don't think we can, we can, win many games based on just being a better team than the other side. We have to do it by winning ugly. We have to do it by creating set pieces, um, you know, playing long balls, being more direct, because that is, A, it plays into our strength of a Millwall side and being a little bit more direct. But B, that is our strength. We are a very, clearly under Harris, a very well-organised and drilled side. Um, and until we have the resources that will enable us to buy some of the players that will get us there, which is only what Joe Edwards was trying to do, but he was trying to do it with players he didn't have, and that's why I don't blame him at all, is that we, we have to go back to basics. And I feel like we've done that to win ugly. We've scored three goals under Harris now, two from uh, free kicks and one from a penalty. You know, I do, I do have a concern about scoring goals from open play. And, you know, I'm going to flick up another thing in a moment. But the, 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 the concern I have is whilst yesterday was great and I'll take it until the end of the season, can we sustain that? And when this kind of Harris bounce goes and we've got five or six, seven, eight games left or whatever, we think we've got 11 left now, is it going to be enough to keep us up by playing this way? and just trying to be really effective from set pieces. I don't know, and that's my concern. So I'm going to flick something else up now. So what you've got on screen here is, since Borough at home, and a lot of my comparisons from this, and Borough at home to the Watford game, this is um, comparing three different things, right? So this is showing our touches in the final third. It's showing the amount of short and medium passes attempted, and then long passes attempted. And short, medium pass, by the way, is anything under 30 yards. Long passes is 30 yards plus. So for those of you that listen to this on a podcast, and I'm basically comparing Edwards from Borough to Sheffield Wednesday 
and then of course Harris with his two games. What this shows us is that there has been a 40% decrease of touches in the final third, which is what I'm saying about how long can this last for? Because whilst it's great, it's effective, I'm not so sure it's always sustainable. And whether you get to the final third with short or long passes, it doesn't matter. It's ultimately, it's very difficult to score goals if you're not touching the ball in the final third. So that is a concerning stat, I think. Um, what you're then seeing is how Harris, in a very short period of time, has changed our playing style fundamentally. So what, what we're looking at here is short, medium passes attempted, long passes attempted. So short, medium pass attempted, we've had a 50% drop off under Harris versus Edwards. Now, some of that year is because we're playing teams like Southampton and Watford, where we're giving them the ball. Be interesting to see what we do against Birmingham at home. Will we still do that or not? Don't know. But a 50% drop off in passes attempted that short and medium, but only a 28% drop off in long passes. So again, what this tells me is we are going more direct. And we're going more direct and it is being effective, but we are not going to create chances if we're not touching the ball in the final third. And that's the bit I want to make. I don't want to take the gloss off yesterday. Harris is doing a phenomenal job. He is the right man to keep us up. And I trust he will do everything in his power to do so. All I'm trying to highlight is, actually, if you st take a step back and you look at the performance yesterday, I don't think it was that great. It was superb from a defensive perspective. But I do struggle to see where we're going to score goals from and goals from open play. That's all I'm trying to highlight here um, with some of these stats. So I think, I think honestly, and again, this might trigger some people, but I felt that yesterday was a very Gary, Gary Rowick performance but just with a bit more fight and passion that ultimately comes from Neil Harris and the and the club as a whole being united. And that is what you're going to get from Neil Harris. You know, um, it, um, even the season that we finished one place above the relegation zone, uh, which was our second season back in the championship, Neil Harris had a 30% win record at home, which is a lot better than where we are now. Um the season before, where we finished, I think, 7th or 8th, he had a 52% win, win record at home. This is what Harris can give you. He, he is able to get... It was always the away form, if you cast your mind back, but he is able to get these teams up to beat teams that ultimately have better resources. And that's, as I say, that's absolutely fine. But I think a big test will be when we come against sides like Birmingham at home and then how we choose a, a way, a style to play. Because we're not going to be able to just park... Loads of low, you know, park two two banks of four, and just defend against these sides because we are going to have to take them to to take the game to them. So that's all I wanted to kind of mention on that. And I think you know overall, I'm absolutely buzzing. Yes, with with the with the result yesterday. Um, I don't want to some of the things I've said to to come across negative. I'm just calling it as I see it. And I think what's frustrating is every other team seems to be bloody winning as well. You know, um, it's absolutely bonkers how there's only six points between 12th and 22nd in the championship. And this is why it is the most competitive league in the league, despite the riches that some clubs have and the, you know, the, the benefit and resources they have. Whilst we haven't necessarily moved away from the bottom three that much with the two wins, we have pulled other teams back in. So the likes of Plymouth, Blackburn and Birmingham, two of which we play in the next three games, I think are now all involved in a dogfight. And, I think if we can go unbeaten against Birmingham and Blackburn, I think we'll be in really good position with just nine games to go. If we can just get a point at Blackburn, maybe go ultra defensive with, with the players we got, because Obafemi's not going to be able to play again, I don't think, and then go and beat Birmingham at home, I think that will leave us in a really good stead. And personally, I'd love Birmingham to go down for what they did with sacking Eustace and bringing Rooney in. Um, I would absolutely love them to go down. But it's going to be tough. Um, I think so. Overall, look, what I would say is yesterday um, was great to see Harris back. The atmosphere overall was pretty good. Got a bit nervy at times. It was back to the wall stuff, but we beat a very good side. All right. They're lacking in confidence. Didn't create too many clear cut chances, but they got a lot of quality. Um, and we beat a very good side. Two wins from two for Neil Harris. My only concern is how long we can keep this up for. I'm not so sure we can sustain it, especially with the Fred Bear squad, particularly up top, that we've got 
for many more games. So we've got to also find a way of against other teams that have less possession of being more effective and getting more touches in the final third. That's kind of how I'd summarise it. For Watford, Watford fans listen to this, I think, um, as I say, good side, lots of, of, of obvious quality. I'm just not so sure that they want it enough, if I'm being honest. Uh, and listening to Emmanuel Dennis's interview after the match, I think, you know, if, 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 if one of Millwall players had come out and spoke about how he did, I think there would be uh, there'd be wars. So <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm going to do a few sort of player ratings. I'm going to call some players out. So my man of the match yesterday was George Honeyman. I thought he was outstanding. Um, as I already said, most uh, defensive actions, considering he's playing further up the field, he ran, he chased everything. I'd love to see Steve, uh, running, running stats. I thought he was absolutely fantastic. And he... He just epitomised everything yesterday. He gave everything and I thought he was brilliant. Um, I thought Sarkic, so starting from the back, I thought Sarkic was good. He did everything he needed to. A couple of times in the first half, he came out and made his presence known. I thought I thought he was good overall. Um, I thought Danny Mack, again, second game, I think he was faultless. Playing out of position against really tricky wingers, I thought he was excellent. And um, it's only going to give him more confidence. So I'm really pleased for Danny. And he was a close uh, runner-up. I thought uh, Tanganga was also, again, excellent. He's starting to look like a proper, proper top, top centre-half, especially in this league. I can't see a way in which we can keep him, but I do feel as though he's starting to get sucked in a little bit. He, you know, I saw yesterday he was sort of winding up one of their players that kept diving. So, I don't know. We can hope, but uh, how nice would it be to see Tanganga back at the club next season? But um, I can't see it, but we'll see. Um, Cooper, I'm just going to quickly flack, uh, flack, not going to flack anything. I'm going to flick something up quickly on Jake Cooper just now. Um, so I think Jake Cooper has looked so much better. Don't get me wrong. I still think there's room for improvement, but I think he's looked so much better against Southampton and Watford. And I was like, why is that? And it's ultimately because he's not being asked to do things he can't do. So look at the screen now. And for those of you that can't see it, this again, using the same matches as comparison. So from Borough at home to Watford looking at Edwards and Harris, averaging them out and seeing the percentage differences. We've got the amount of distance. I'm assuming it's in yards, but I'll check. Doesn't matter either way. Again, this is all from Opta. The distance, he is carrying the ball. And then the amount of touches he's having in the middle third, right? And what you can clearly see here is he's had an 80% reduction in the distance that he's carrying the ball. So again, that tells me he's not being asked to play out from the back, bring the ball out from the back. He is being asked to hit the long diagonals. <laughs> and that's what Cooper does effectively. He's not being asked to play out from the back. Then touches in the middle third of the pitch reduced by 71%. So again, that to me is representative of A, him not being asked to play out from the back, carry the ball out of the back. But also, I think we're playing slightly deeper, which means, of course, all of his touches are going to be further back. So... I just wanted to flick that up because, to me, I do feel on the eye test, Cooper's looked better. And ultimately, it's because he's been asked to do things that he's comfortable with. And whether that's right or wrong in terms of the long-term success of the football club, ultimately, what is vital is stay, for the long-term success of the football club is staying in this league. And to stay in this league, that's what you need to get Jake Cooper to do. So that was a really interesting observation. So I thought he was pretty good. Uh, I thought Savile and Billy Mitchell ran their absolute socks off. Both very, very good. I thought they were, uh, for different reasons, I felt Savile was more sort of playing a leadership role, winding players up, getting our players, you know, uh, rolled up. Um, and also, um, you know, putting his body in the line, whereas Mitchell, I felt, just covered every blade of the grass. I thought they were they were brilliant as a pair. Um, it's a shame because you've got the likes of Casper Denon on the bench, who is a super, super footballer. Um, and, you know, it's a case of where does he fit in is he going to come into the side when we have more possession? Possibly. Um, and then I thought Zian Fleming was excellent yesterday. Again, another close uh, runner-up for man of the match. It's now seven goals, four assists in the league, two goals in two. He steps up when it matters. I feel like his effort levels have gone through the roof. I feel like he's he, he gets it. And he's feeding off the crowd. We're feeding off him. And... I think it's he, he has been excellent in the last two games. And you know I was criticising him uh, under Edwards.
but he's been excellent the last two games. And make no mistake about it, it is vital that he comes back into form because A, it helps us keep in this league and B, when we get into the summer, if we are still in this league and he's played a big role in that, we'll get a lot more money for him when we, if we try and, which I think we will, try and sell him than if he's either not playing well or in League One. So everyone needs to be happy with that. Um, Obafemi, I thought was his best game, worked hard, ran the channels. I think he's going to improve as fitness goes and I think he's going to be vital for the running. Um, and then Duncan Watmore, as I said, I felt he, he you know, to me, doesn't like effort. Um, I just think sometimes he's, his legs go. Uh, and also for uh, honourable mention for the subs that come on, Norton Cuffey, I thought he did quite well, uh, as did Longman. Um, and Denor, to be fair. I, think it was, I can't remember. There was one thing he did right at the end and I was like, that was class, but I can't remember what it was. But anyway, look, I've gone over 30 minutes. Um, thank you all so much for listening. Um, I really do appreciate it. It's, uh, I really do enjoy doing these and I, uh, you know, I hope that you enjoy listening, them, listen to them as much as I do enjoy doing them. God, that was a mouthful. Um, buzzing now for next Saturday. Uh, obviously we've got Blackburn before then. I think if we can pick four points up, we really will start to move much further away from those relegation zone, uh, places. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you very much for listening as always. Please do like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now.